Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're going to be talking about Holly 750 carburetors and how they work. Last week we took apart the Holly 750 and we ended up changing out the jets and what we noticed is there was some carbon buildup inside, a little bit of crud, so it's a good time to get the carburetor off the car to clean it out and I think walk through exactly each one of the different systems in this carburetor and then how it works. So we're going to walk through everything from the fuel side to the air side and we're going to talk about how it functions and walk through it step by step so that you can see exactly the different systems that you may want to adjust, you may want to play with, you may want to clean. So let's go ahead and get into it. We've gotten the carburetor off the car and relatively simple to take them out. It's four screws to lift it up. You need to take off the throttle. You need to take out any of the choke linkage and the two springs for the throttle return. Other than that, the vacuum set, there's vacuum lines on the bottom. Take those out, make sure nothing drops into your intake manifold and then you're set to take it apart. We're going to be walking through it on this stand here. A stand like this is, I purchased a stand like this recently and it's really helped me out on kind of working on the carburetor, tuning the carburetor because you can actuate everything without having to worry about the throttle blades hitting the table or anything like that. So if you have a chance, get a get it something like this. There's plenty of them available at Summit Racing Jegs wherever you buy your car parts. So let's go ahead and let's start taking it apart and talking about it. So on this carburetor, it's a Holley 750 double pumper, mechanical secondaries. You have two fuel bowls on either side, one here and one here. Both of these fuel bowls have sight glasses in the side so you can see what the level of the fuel is inside this bowl. This level is critical when you're working on setting up your carburetor. Also on this side of the carburetor, you have a timed or ported vacuum slot coming off the metering block. We're running a manual choke on the car, so this is manual versus what you might find on some, which is going to be an electric choke similar to this. The electric choke runs completely off of 12 volts. You don't need any wires running to the interior of the car. The manual choke runs off of having a cable from under the dash to the car that controls the exact position of where the choke is. Here's the choke on top of the carburetor. That's fully controlled by this. And what the purpose of the choke is, is when you have, when you're first starting up the car, you're gonna have the choke cracked open just a little bit to block off some of the airflow. Because when you're starting the car, when the engine's colder, you want a little bit more of a richer environment while you're putting gas into the vehicle. As the car warms up, you open the choke up more till your normal operating conditions where it's gonna be fully open. Part of the setup you can see right here is the high idle screw, which gets set and opens up the throttle blades a little bit when you set the carburetor with the choke on, which then comes off when you fully open the choke. Also on the side, you have two of your four corner idle mixture screws. You have one, two, the two are on the other side of the meeting, metering blocks. And then you have the accelerator pump cam set up and the accelerator, one of the accelerator pumps over here, but we'll walk through the system on the other side. On this side, you have your two other idle mixture screws. You have your throttle linkage and your accelerator pump set up. On this, you have a single screw here, which holds a cam or an accel which is the accelerator pump cam which drives the rate at which the accelerator pump is gonna turn on. So when you hit this hard, you're gonna see this here riding on this cam. And when you hit it really hard, it's gonna pump some gas. It's gonna push the accelerator pump down. And when it pushes it down, it's gonna push gas through the accelerator pump, through the metering block and into the main carburetor. Now you can get these accelerator pump cams in many different profiles and sizes. Here's a chart from Holly that shows the pump cam lift versus the throttle position. These are swapped out to provide tuning towards the accelerator pump shot that's going into the engine during rapid acceleration or rapid change of the throttle position. Holly recommends the number one position for idle speeds below 900 RPM and suggests moving to number two position for engines that are above 900 RPM. The number two position delays hitting the peak cam lift on the eccentric and it adds lift later in the throttle position. 
So this is a four barrel mechanical secondary carburetor. And what that means is you're gonna have essentially four throttle blades down here that are gonna open at different rates. For this carburetor with a mechanical secondary, when you hit a certain RPM or a certain throttle position, that's when the secondaries open. There are other types of carburetors, which are vacuum secondaries. The vacuum secondary has these two throttle blades attached to a vacuum diaphragm by a rod. As the RPM increases the engine, so does the vacuum inside this intake manifold underneath it. The added vacuum will then pull on that rod and open the diaphragm, move the diaphragm, and it will open up these secondary throttle blades. I like the mechanical secondaries for my car, so that's what I'm using here. But you can see as this go opens, the mechanical area pulls and these start to move as well. So these four idle mixture screws will, each one will control the fuel flow into the intake manifold when the throttle body is shut or mostly shut. When it's open, the throttle body, the fuel will come from the main jets, which we'll see when we take this apart. So these throttle body blades, which we were taking a look at and talking about, they're, they control the amount of airflow through the carburetor. As you push on the gas pedal, these open more and more and let more air into the carburetor, which in turn lets more fuel into the carburetor through the, either the idle jets or the main jets. So you'll probably know this on mine, but mine actually have holes on them. Uh, I had to modify them because of the big cam and trying to get the car to idle correctly. On the bottom, we're gonna have three vacuum connections. This one's gonna go to the power brakes. These two can go to something on the front of the intake, whether it's PCV, or it can go to a carburetor that has a vacuum advance. Okay, now that we're looking at the carburetor from underneath, the choke is all the way open. We'll take a, take a look at the transfer slots. On the carburetor, there's transfer slots inside of the primary and secondary throttle openings. On the underside of the carburetor, you can see the transfer slot while the throttle blade is opening. These slots pull additional fuel from the carburetor's idle circuit that's controlled by the idle feed restrictor, which we'll show later. The transfer slot will add fuel to compensate for increased throttle opening before the main metering system kicks in. So while you're transitioning from a closed throttle to an open throttle, these help out to make sure that you have enough fuel. Now let's go ahead and take off the primary bowl of the carburetor so we can take a look at what's inside. Now on the carburetor, you're also gonna note the shooters. These, you're gonna have one in the secondary here and then you're gonna have one in the primary here. Typically they're different sizes and they're, what their job is is when you hit the gas quickly, the accelerator pump pushes in and it'll add some extra fuel to the mixture when you're coming off of idle. That's one way to make sure that you don't go too lean when you're quickly accelerating. So making sure you get that extra fuel down into the intake before the main jets start to take over. Now, one thing that's important to note is when you change these out, if you go smaller, so you change out the squirter, the nozzle, down from a 31 to a 28, you're not actually gonna deliver more fuel. All you're gonna end up doing is making that shot longer. We have the float. So inside the carburetor, you have a float. This main, the float's main job is to make sure that the fuel level is correct on the sight glass in the carburetor. So as it goes up, it turns off at a certain level because it, it hits a valve in the back of it. Then as it comes back down, that valve opens up and lets fuel inside of the carburetor ball. So when it's up, it's closed. When it's down, it's open and letting fuel into the carburetor ball. On this side of the metering block, you can see the two main jets on the primary and you can see the power valve, the back side of it. Now let's go ahead and take it off and look. You can see we have the power valve and then a bunch of different chambers within. The power valve is a simple diaphragm with a tapered seed valve that is exposed on the carb body side to the intake manifold vacuum. With high manifold vacuum in a part throttle situation, the low pressure will pull on the valve, keeping it closed. As the throttle opens and the load increases, the manifold vacuum will drop at a calibrated point, a spring inside the power valve will overcome the low manifold vacuum and it'll open the valve. While it's the valve is opening, it's directing fuel from the float bowl into the main well into the metering block. 
The power valve circuit is completely separate from the main jets and it's just used to add more fuel when necessary. This is the location where the accelerator pump will pump its fuel into the carburetor by the squirter. This is the location of the main air bleed from the body of the carburetor. These are the main passages to the main nozzles in the carburetor. Here are the idle air bleeds for the idle circuit. Here are the idle discharge ports. Here are your two idle mixture screws that are located on the outside of the metering block. And here is the timed spark passage. And last, this is the vent for the fuel bowl. Well, I gotta get this carburetor back together so I can get it in the car and go for a cruise tomorrow. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next week on Smacky's Garage.